This is Pastor Tom Arnold welcoming you to the Good News Radio broadcast. Ephesians 2.10 in the Amplified Version tells us that the Lord has predestined that we should live a good life which He has prearranged and made ready for us to live. God really only has one plan for your life, and it is for an abundant life. I invite you to join me for part two of the message titled, Answers to Life's Questions. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. Well, see, God's got a pre-planned, pre-arranged foreordained plan for each of our lives. Ephesians chapter two says, for we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us taking paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them. And I love this in the parentheses. Notice this, living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Every one of us in the eyes of God, he has prearranged a good life for you. Oh, pastor, you don't understand. I'm Job. One commentary I read, it said the book of Job, the best of our estimation lasted nine months. Listen, if you've been camped out in the book of Job and living the life of Job for the last decade, you've been there too long. Another thing about Job, it says that the Lord restored to Job twice of everything he ever had. And then it says Job went on and lived over 100 years in the double portion. So sometimes, you know, we don't key in on the 100 years of living in the double portion. We key in on that season of testing in our life. But no, God says that you're going to live a good life, which he prearranged and made ready for you to live. I remember years ago, there was a couple in our church and they were going through a real difficult time. And I wrote this scripture out on a three by five card and they just put it on their refrigerator. In their mind at that season of their life, they could not see how any part of their life would be described as living a good life that God had prearranged and made ready for them to live. But they'd walk by the refrigerator and they'd say, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus that you have prearranged and made ready a good life for me. You know, the more you talk that, you school yourself into believing it. Lord, you have prearranged something good for me. You have a good plan for me. Well, pastor, there's some people that it just seems like God's given them a bigger break than what he's given me. Well, I can't explain everything in the kingdom, but I can tell you this, I'm a father, I got three kids, I don't have a good will for two of them, but not the third one. How many believe that? God's not looking over planet earth and saying, you know, there's just some of them I like more than others. There is no respect of persons with God. Romans 2.11 says that. So we believe that God has a good plan for each person. Notice Jeremiah said this about God's plan for his life. Jeremiah 1. It says, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So before Jeremiah was ever born, the Lord said, I got a plan for you. I've ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. Then said I, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth for you will go to all to whom I send you and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. But notice what the Lord said in verse five, before you were ever born, before you were ever even formed in the womb, I mean, it'd be one thing to say before you were born, and it does say that, but it says even backs up further, before you were even formed in the womb, I knew you, and I had a plan for you, and I have an ordained plan for your life. Well, I don't think God has something for Jeremiah, but not the rest of us. I think it's a picture that God has something for all of us. Now, here's another thing, and I've been meditating on this. This past week, I got the call from Walter Shamel about Ron on early Sunday morning, and then I got in my office after church Sunday afternoon, and my neighbor called me, and he said, Tom, my wife passed away last night. Would you do the funeral? That was on Thursday. I officiated that funeral. And I really got up, and I knew a lot of my neighbors would be there. 
And I thought, well, this is my chance to preach the gospel to the whole neighborhood. All right. <laughs> and so they were there, and I thought, Lord, I need a word from you on this one. Give me something. I want something good to share with these neighbors. And the Lord put this in my heart, a lot of what I'm sharing here. And it was this point really that kind of stuck with me and has stuck with me since Thursday. And it's this thought right here. Your life is a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift from God. Psalm 127, verse number three, it says, children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Did you know that just because you grew up, you did not cease to become a gift from God? Oh, Tom, you know, when I was a little child, yeah, I was a gift. But now that I've grown up, I've kind of timed out of that. No, we're all still gifts to God, gifts to the body of Christ. God gave gifts unto men. The Bible speaks about when Jesus' ministry, he gave gifts unto men. He divided out these fivefold ministry and he put them in people. God puts gifts and callings in our life, and these gifts are to be used for his glory. You know, if you got a good wife, how many know that's a gift from God? If you got a good husband, that's a gift from God. Amen. Children are a gift from the Lord. So we need to realize that the body of Christ, fivefold ministry, is a gift from God. To be able to be born again, that's a gift from God. It's not of yourself, lest any man should boast, but it's a gift from God. So the Lord has healing as a gift. It talks about gifts of healing. Your health is a gift. It is. You're a gift. Life is a gift. So don't mismanage the gift. Take care of your life. Use your life for the glory of God. Amen. But we need to realize that we are a gift to other people, and God's gift is in us, and other people are gifts to us. What is the ultimate gift? Jesus is the ultimate gift. He came to us, and we receive eternal life, and that's a gift. Don't take your life for granted. Your health is a gift. Do everything you can to manage the health you have. Take care of the health you have. And it is a blessing. And how many know you're going to have to take that body you got? You get one body, so you're going to have to use it until you die, so take care of it. Your life is a gift. Your intellect is a gift. The ability to read is a gift. We had a man here on Wednesday night share his testimony. And Pastor Philip, he said, you know, I was a young man. I was born in Corpus Christi, Texas. I went to school. I couldn't understand why I wasn't learning like the other kids. And he's 72 years old. He says, back then, nobody knew what dyslexia was. I, nobody knew what that was. I was dyslexic, and nobody understood that. And fourth grade, he quit school. He said, I went every morning. My parents thought I was going to school, but I just quit. And then he said, you know, that gave way to a life of crime. And he said, by the time I'm in my mid-20s, I'm addicted to heroin. And then he tells the story how he got delivered by the power of Jesus Christ. And his wife told the story how that I knew he needed to get in the Word, but he wasn't in the Word like he needed to be because he couldn't read right. He was working in auto body, painting cars, you know, putting the Bondo on cars and everything. And he said, I got my Bible. And she said, I'd just walk around following him at work, reading the Bible to him. She said, when the compressor kicked on, I had to read a little louder. <laughs> then I would just read the word to him, read the word to him, read the word to him. I'm going to interview him today for a road show. But just said, I just got the word in me. So just think about all the gifts that you have, all the gifts that are around you. Maybe things that you think is foregone conclusion. Well, it's a gift from God. And praise God for that gift. Your life is a gift. You're a gift to somebody else. That's what the Bible tells us. And God needs you. God needs you. He does. And if you're on the earth right now, it's because God wants you here. And as I said earlier, God doesn't have any unimportant people doing unimportant stuff. If God asks us to do it, it's important. Okay, now here's another thing about your life. You are eternal. Death doesn't end your life. In fact, death is the beginning to eternal life. You have eternal life now, but you step into that eternal realm at the time of death. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says this, He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, 
Think about that. God has put eternity in their hearts. Everybody living today is eternal. Everybody you meet. Everybody you meet is eternal. And I tell you, when you get the revelation of that, you just realize whether they're up and out, whether they're down and out, whether they're famous or whether they're homeless, they're all important to God. Because see, they're all eternal. Whether the $100 bill is crisp and clean and has never been in circulation or whether it's all wadded up and you found it in the trash can and it's got grease all over it and dirt all over it, it's still worth $100. People matter to God. So the scripture says God has put eternity in our heart. There wasn't a time in the past that you did not exist, but there will never be a time in the future that you cease to exist. You're always going to be around. It's just silly for you not to think about your eternity. It's just foolish for you not to prepare for eternity. You need to think in terms of that. In fact, God said in Amos chapter 4, God spoke to the nation of Israel. He says, prepare to meet your God, O Israel. People put more planning into their earth retirement than they do their eternity. And, you know, it's funny because you talk to people, and if they don't plan for their retirement, which I believe everybody should, so I'm not minimizing that. But you talk to people, and if you don't put enough priority in planning for your retirement, well, you're just being irresponsible. You're not being wise. You're not even thinking ahead, which I believe you should prepare for a retirement. Let me tell you, retirement, let's just say you get 40 years out of that retirement. Think about that. Did you know eternity is longer than 40 years? So you need to think about this eternal time. Job asked the question, and it says, if a man dies, will he live again? Here's another thought about your life, answering questions about life. Your life is designed and was designed to live in harmony with God. Your life was designed to live in harmony with God. Augustine made this statement. He says, you have made us for yourself, O God, and our heart is restless until we rest in you. So people are restless. People are trying to find satisfaction here, there, and everywhere, but you're not going to find satisfaction until you find the Lord. And when you come to God, it's amazing. He fills a void in your life. There's like this void in people's lives that you can try to fill it up with everything, but God's the one that has to fill it up. I can't figure out why I can't get no satisfaction. Well, the reason why is only God can truly satisfy us. You can't pull life out of people. You have to pull life out of God. Notice James 2 and 13. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him or it was reckoned unto him as being righteous. Notice this, the consequence or the byproduct of that is he was called a friend of God. Thanks for joining me today. It's so important that we always remember the value of a human life. In Mark 8, Jesus said, For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? One life is worth all the money in the world. Always remember, your life matters to God. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.